Hello guys and welcome to the 7th episode of the Cura Advanced Settings 2019 here at Architects 3DP. In the last episodes, we have been studying the quality, shell and infill tabs here in the Cura Custom Settings menu. Today, as you have seen in the title, we're going to analyze the Material tab, the one that is going to drive you crazy if you don't configure it properly before starting to make your first prints. But before starting, be sure to click here in the subscribe button and to ring that bell to be notified when new cool stuff is uploaded. If you do it, you will help me create new content and grow in the channel to reach more special viewers like you. Today, I've planned to remember to drop into the canvas a 3D model before starting, so I'm going to drop here the popular 3D Benchy created by Daniel Noré. As always, you will find the download link down in the description. First of all, I'm going to deactivate the support, since we still have them activated from the Mickey Mouse print in the episode number 6. So we'll go to Custom Settings, Support, and deactivate the first option. Then click Slice again, and as you can see, here we go. Now I'm going to open the Material tab and start analyzing the different features we can tune in this tab. At the first glance, as you can see, we have the printing temperature that corresponds to the temperature of the nozzle and it's set to 200 degrees, then 40 degrees for the build plate, and finally we have the Enable Retraction parameter that is activated. These two first settings won't change the print visually here in the simulator, and also won't change the printing time or filament usage. We will experiment the real changes when we actually make the prints in real life. The retraction feature in this case will affect the printing times a little bit. As we can see, reducing it from 1 hour and 40 minutes to 1 hour and 39 minutes. Nothing crazy in such a small scale print as the 3D Benchy is. Now we're going to activate it back and jump into the settings visibility menu to see what else we can display in our custom settings section. The first two options are deactivated by other parameters and we won't display them. Then we have printing temperature, the one displayed by default that will control the temperature of the nozzle during the print, and right below we find the printing temperature of the initial layer. We're going to show it, since this is an option that I used to use a lot. The first layer is the key layer to get a successful print. When I start a new print, I'm looking at the 3D printer making sure I get a perfect first layer. If we succeed in this, we'll get a successful print job 99% of the times. That's why I like to increase this temperature in between 5 and 10 degrees Celsius from the printing temperature. If it's warmer, the plastic will be more liquid and it will stick better to the print surface. Once said, I'm going to increase this value to 210 degrees Celsius. Back into the settings visibility menu, the next we find are the initial and final printing temperatures. I find these couple settings kind of useless, since the setting that the printer is going to wait for is the initial layer print temperature, so I'm going to hide them. The next available feature is the build plate temperature and the one for the initial layer one more time. I'm going to show the second one, and as we did with the nozzle temp, I'm going to increase it a bit more for the first layer, to get a really good start of the print. The build plate temperature will depend a lot for me in a few factors. The first one is the material you are using. For example, in PLA you can even print with the heated bed turned off, and for example with other materials such as ABS, need the heated bed to be very hot to avoid warping. The second one is the material of the build surface. If you are using a clean glass, you may want to set this value to for example 50 degrees. Instead, if you put some glue on the surface, hairspray or other adhesive on top of this glass, you can perfectly print with the print bed at ambient temperature. Finally, if you have a build tag surface or any kind of Chinese copy that most of the 3D printer brands use, you may want to set the temperature in between 50 and 60 degrees to print with PLA. And then, when it cools down, the print will pop out very easily. For this use case, my printing surface on the Architects 3D PI3 is bare aluminum, and I used to spray a bit of hairspray on top, but has been working great for me so far. For that I'm going to leave the build plate temperature at 40 degrees, but I'm going to increase the one for the initial layer by 10 degrees, as we did with the nozzle temp, so I will set it to 50 Celsius. Continuing with the settings visibility menu, as you can see, a lot of parameters have this black info sign, and are not available to activate due to our machine. So the next settings we are going to display here is the flow. We have the possibility to choose a different flow for walls, top, infill, skirts, supports, etc. But I am only going to activate as well the initial layer flow. By default it's set to 100%, and it should work perfectly if our machine has a correct modeling configuration, matching the steps per millimeter accordingly to the extruder gear ratio, and also the size of the pulley we are going to be using. It is not properly calibrated in some of my machines, so that's why I'm gonna keep this parameter displayed. Anyways, if we notice an over extrusion or under extrusion in a particular filament, we can always tweak it from here to solve each particular case. Since we set the line width of the initial layer to 0.44mm instead of 0.4, that is the size of the nozzle, we'll leave the flow to 100% now, and if we notice under extrusion, we'll increase it a little bit as I said before. 
before. Next, in the settings visibility menu, we got the retraction settings, where we are going to activate some of them. The enabled retraction is displayed and activated by default, and we're going to keep it like that, since if not, our prints will look dirty. Then we're going to display the retract that layer change option, retraction distance, retraction speed, and retraction extra prime amount. Down below we have the nozzle switch retractions, very useful and necessary to set in a two extruder setup, but not in our case with this single extruder printer, so we won't display them this time. Back in the custom settings menu, the enable retraction is activated, and I'm going to activate as well the retract that layer change option. As you can see the printing time in this little model will remain the same, and it could increase a little bit with this option activated. In some prints, we'll have a movement from where the actual layer finishes and the next layer starts. If we don't activate the retraction, we will have a lot of, let's call it hairs, across the print. This does not happen much printing with PLA, but trust me that the amount of hairs while printing in PETG can drive you crazy if you don't have a proper configuration. Next, the retraction distance will depend on the extruder system we are using. For example, if your printer has a button extruder, I will set this retraction distance to for example 6mm at 35mm per second speed. This will make sure the filament goes out and back to the nozzle properly along the button too. Instead, if you are using a direct drive system as we do in the Architect 3 pi 3 for the retraction I'm going to set a value of 0.8mm. I'm going to increase the retraction speed to 35mm per second as well to make sure this movement is shorter and faster. Faster. And we should not have any problem with this setting, since as I said before, we are using a direct drive extruder. Finally, the last setting we displayed is the retraction extra prime amount, that by default is set to 0 cubic millimeters. I'm going to increase it just a little bit to make sure we won't have filament adhesion problems after the retraction. For that, I'm going to set a value of, for example, 0.2 cubic millimeters. And this, guys, is the last setting we are going to adjust in this material tab. Now, as always, I'm going to update the profile clicking here in the profile menu and clicking on update profile with current settings configuration. Now, as we do at the end of each episode, I'm going to drop here the Mickey Mouse 3D model created by Gabriel Martini and I downloaded it from my mini factory. You will find the link in the description, by the way. I'm going to activate back the supports, slice the model and print it to compare with the ones printed in the last episode, guys. As you can see, we cut down these two minutes we gained in the last episode and the quality, as always, is exceptional. I think that was the last thing for this episode, guys. In the next video, we'll study the speed tab, the one that is going to allow you to speed up your prints or just make sure you get a perfect quality result. Definitely stay tuned for the next episode because it's gonna be very interesting, guys. Finally, I just wanted to ask you to subscribe to Architects 3 dp If you still haven't, hit the like button, leave a comment and share this video so more people will be able to enjoy with this project. And as always, a special shout out to our Patreon supporters for making this channel possible. If you want to join them and support the channel as well, you can do it navigating to patreon.com slash architects 3 dp clicking here in the top right corner or in the link in the description. Remember that becoming a Patreon, you will get access to all the necessary components for this project as well as all the past projects in the channel and much more rewards that you can check in our Patreon page. Ok guys, so as always, see you in the next video.